To continue on my A24 series, I have to review a movie that's really, that splits me down the middle. I'm currently making a list for the top 10 worst A24 films and the top 10 A24 films that actually surprised me. But this one, I don't think I can put it on a list. That film is Midsummer, the second feature directed by Ari Aster, who directed Hereditary. And if you guys want to know my thoughts on Hereditary, don't bother. D d I will not. The movie's okay at best. This movie, you know what? Let's go back to Hereditary. Hereditary, if you want me to give it a score real quick, details. 7 out of 10. It, it's a great, it's a, it has great acting, great cinematography, but the story just did not blew me away. And I felt like, I know the film's all about grief, but that's all I got. It was just grief, frustration, and anger. Um, I don't think the characters were that versatile. I understand people saying it's very terrifying, very horror, but I really think they, I really think because the movie came out, during a time when we were getting so many bad horror films. So yeah, if you want to click that dislike button, I mean, okay, okay, please don't, okay. I think I just ended my YouTube channel. But yeah, Midsummer. why am I so split on this movie? Well, let's get to the plot. It's about this girl named Danny who recently suffers a very big tragedy in the first opening scene. After this tragedy, she suffers mass depression and anxiety and her very distant boyfriend reluctantly does, takes her to a midsummer trip with him and his friends. There, the movie get the movie induces a lot of drugs, some very interesting ideas, but overall falls flat on his face. Everything from the opening scene until they reached the festival was amazing, and overall, the filmmaking alone is a 10 out of 10. I love the filmmaking in this movie. I love the colors, they're very saturated, especially in the tragedy scene, with two very well disturbing moments in the tragedy scene and when Danny enters a small wooden shack. I really got the Blu-ray mainly because the filmmaking is that spectacular. This is definitely a film that you should take notes on. <sighs> the downfall of this movie is the characters. They are some of the dumbest characters I have ever seen. I saw a comment on Chris Duckman's review and his basic and he sums it up pretty well. It's a beautifully shot, well-made movie about the dumbest group of friends. The moment that completely takes me out of the movie is the sacrifice scene. The elders, in case, minor spoilers, but when you reach 72 in this festival, you are now the elder. And the elder, they do this thing where they off themselves. They self-sacrifice themselves to the festival. This old man and old lady fall off a cliff. One lady falls on a rock, completely explodes her face. And then the old man <laughs> fails at doing that. And he ends up breaking his leg, making other cult members grab a giant mallet and bash his face in. And they don't do it like, oh, two, three times. They keep doing it until his face is literally caved in, until the mullet is smashing to the back of his head. One couple made the smart decision was like, I'm out of here, but the rest of the characters decide to stay. And I'm sorry, regardless what you think, but there is no way you can convince me that a group of people is gonna stay after seeing a guy getting his face face bashed in and then seeing a woman getting her face exploded on a rock. I would have left too. You know why? Because that it will traumatize me for life. You can't convince me even if even one of the even one of the leaders of the group was saying, oh no, it's a normal thing. It's a normal, please don't leave. Yeah, I'm leaving. You two just basically murder that man. And I'm sorry, but I'm not a fan of seeing people's face exploding or face being bashed in. They want to do a thesis, and I was just like, are you serious? This cult might be dangerous. It, it, does, it just does the cliche of almost every cult movie. This is why I don't like cult movies in anything. It's always the same thing. A group of friends join this cult. They're not aware of how dangerous this cult is. And by the time the cult gets dangerous, it's too late. Also, they have this character who's just, just horny all the time. I didn't care for him when he died. He was just being stupid. He he pees on the ashes of their debt of the elders' ashes, and then it's like, did you not see them dumping the bodies, the ashes there? Like, are you serious? Ari Esther also has a weird obsession with naked old people, and he gets a little insane with this movie. And I don't know. I also don't get some of the lore. 
That, now, here's the thing. I don't mind things that are not explained, but I just feel like he was just trying to make interesting things with this cult. But unfortunately, this cult never makes me ask questions. I'm just like, okay. All right. So they have a person made of incest write the lore of their history. At the end, I... <sighs> At the end, I don't know, it was really hard for me to care about the characters. I only cared about the smart ones who decided to leave. Now, some people go back and forth with the theme about grief and family. Some of the fans of the film criticize critics who say the opening scene is not really brought up so far. Here's the thing, the opening scene is part of the overall theme, but there's so much else happening, people forget about it. We have the tragedy scene. We have Christian being distant from Danny. We have the incest child. We have this ritual where, where a girl basically cuts off her pubic hair and feeds her menstrual blood to Christian. Danny hallucinating thinking Christian and his friends are going to abandon her. Lots of screaming, lots of crying, off-screen deaths. There's just so much happening in this movie that people, I can't blame them for not remembering the theme from the opening intro. It does a bad job focusing on it so i understand why people will criticize and say like hey i what was the point of the intro scene florence pugh i became a fan of florence pugh after this movie because her performance was really amazing that's the other praise i can give this movie she had to show a lot of range and i think she did an excellent job i did think her finale was pretty well made I just wish the storytelling was a little bit better. Overall, the prose, the filmmaking is astounding with Florence Pugh's amazing performance. Even though I'm not really a big fan of the cult lore, I did appreciate what Ari Aster was trying to do. However, the characters are so dumb. I feel like this movie could have ended an hour early if the characters were smart, but they weren't. And it just follows cliches that I'm so sick and tired of. To me, this film, to me, this is a better made film compared to Hereditary. However, the characters are worse. I'm giving it a 6 out of 10. It's, it, 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 I, it's a really ambitious movie. I, I don't know. It's just the story doesn't pull me the whole way through. It is enjoyable to watch, though. I, I honestly say, I know this movie's 2 hours and 20 minutes, but the last time I watched it, it was, it felt shorter than that. Hopefully, I didn't ruin my credibility. I will be continuing more A24-based videos because this company is just so great. Now, do it. You can always hit the subscribe and notification bell. Midsummer, me, Angel, the YouTuber reviewer, using that phrase. Don't know if I'll use it next video. Okay, thanks for watching. Don't take drugs and go to Sweden. Enjoy Midsummer. If you see a bunch of people wearing white robes, that's a, the biggest red flag you can get.